Welcome to The Right Question. I'm Daphne Gray Grant. Today we're talking about STET and other copy editing markings. Let's see what makes the cut. Today I'm answering a question from Fran Gerb in New York. Here's the question. Hello, Daphne. This is Fran, an avid reader of your column. I'm calling because I came across a word in a crossword puzzle that was new to me, STET, S-T-E-T. I looked it up, and I know it is an editorial term. I could not find the word STET used in a sentence, um, and I so I can't get a full grasp of it without that. I was wondering if you use this term frequently in your editing. Thank you so much. Thanks for the question, Fran. I love the arcane bits of knowledge I picked up during my 15-year career in the newspaper business, and I really appreciate your giving me the opportunity to show them off. I'm not surprised you had a hard time figuring out the meaning of this term. It's an unusual one. I learned the basics of copy editing when I was really young, working at my family's weekly newspaper business. The word stat, used during copy editing or proofreading, tells people to ignore or disregard previous markings on the page. The etymology of the word is pretty straightforward though. It comes from the Latin stet, meaning let it stand. Notice how the part where the stet applies also has little dots underneath it. Do you see how the editor has written in red ink all over this paragraph? But they've had second thoughts and after some reflection, they've decided that the author's original text was okay. Because you can't erase red ink, they've written stet, meaning that the graphic artist, the typesetter, and even the author themselves should ignore those red markings and revert to the original text. Because stet is such a specific term, it's hard to use it in anything other than a really workmanlike sentence. But because you've asked, write the word stet on the proof to show that the alteration should be ignored. As I mentioned before, stet certainly falls on the arcane end of the English lexicon, and there are a few other obscure symbols that are also used in copy editing. I always enjoyed the swoop of the delete showing that some text should be removed, but I found the line through a capital letter showing it was meant to be lowercase to be a bit counterintuitive. Most other copy editing marks are fairly self-explanatory though. I've attached a link to those marks below so you can study them if you're interested. To answer your question about whether I use STET when I'm editing, the answer depends on whether I'm editing on paper or electronically. If it's the former, yes, I use it all the time. It's easy for my pen to get ahead of my brain and the word STET saves me from that. But when I'm editing electronically, I don't ever need to use it. The undo function is fantastically useful and a whole lot easier. Finally, while we're on the subject of copy editing, let me wrap up with a pithy comment from Mark Twain. Substitute damn every time you're inclined to write very. Your editor will delete it and the writing will be just as it should be. Thanks for your question, Fran. I hope you find this video damn useful.